Yo, Nico too low. Have you made a video yet? Yes. Today we're gonna talk about Ashes of Creation and I'm gonna make a full review about what I've done so far. I actually wanted to get level 10 today. As you can see, I didn't manage that because the servers were just got awful and I couldn't play anymore. So now we're gonna just do it almost at level 10 and you're just gonna be happy with that. Right now, as you can see, my horse is also having a good time. So I don't know, like this is an alpha. I'll, I'll preface this, okay? I understand that this is an alpha test. And I also understand that Steven and the Intrepid team is always, have always emphasized that this game is clearly um, in, an, in, a, in a true alpha state. Now, an alpha is still a label, but that doesn't really mean anything. What I'm going to judge this game by is mainly uh, an eight-year development cycle and also what they have shown before. And I will go into that in a second. A good example of that is Apocalypse. If you don't know what that is, it was uh, Ashes of Creation's battle royale mode that they had f over five years ago at this point but i want to start actually off by some positives because i do think there is some positive things to say in ashes of creation also another preface my graphics look like dog shit because otherwise my pc burns so i think the graphics are perfectly fine even on this i don't really give a shit about the graphics personally but from what i've seen on the highest graphics this game looks pretty good I don't really care though. So we will we'll, we will just not really talk about the graphics if you're interested in that. So the first thing that I really think is a very good... I, I need to stop riding on this horse. Can you please stop flickering? The first thing I'm going to talk about is the world. And I actually think this is a big positive of Ashes in one way. And that way is I really like being dropped into a world. No main quest line, no shit. As you can see on my minimap right now, there's a random event popping up. None of the events are very interesting, but it still happens, and I think that's that's pretty interesting. At least that's what's happening, right? There's something happening on the map, there's no main quest line that holds your hand and is like super on rails. I hate that shit, and I'm very happy that that does not exist in Ashes of Creation. I actually love that design philosophy, and I always have. I apparently just got loot from doing an event that I didn't do, but uh, sure. That's the first thing that I really enjoy. I actually really enjoy the the freestyle game philosophy and direction of the game where you can you get dropped in a world and need to figure out where to go. And that kind of ties into that mobs actually hit pretty hard, although mobs are also not very interesting at all and like in any capacity no matter where I went, the mobs were either completely fucking brain dead or just outright broken. <laughs> What did I get? Nothing. But I do like that the world feels kind of dangerous and I do like that the, the world is vast. And also I think that ties into the slow leveling. If we weren't playing a test right now and this would be permanent grinding, I actually don't mind slow leveling at all. I think it's actually quite interesting. And probably, you know what? I will say, I will go, I, I understand why people say this now. I really do think the combat is going the right direction for a tap target game. So right now there's a... I found a mushroom. And we will just hit the mushroom a little bit. It will probably look a little bit laggy for you, but that's fine. And it's a little bit buggy because it's an alpha. But I do think, especially this ability here, my three button. I'll show you this in a second on this raven one more time. Your auto attacks you can basically do whenever, just like Guild Wars 2. And a lot of abilities also don't need a target, so you can just start swinging op in the open world and it's kind of interesting. So I'm, I, I do think they're trying to go in a Guild Wars 2 combat direction. Right now though, this is just a scuffed version of that, okay? The best example why I like the combat is my 3 ability here, which I can actually change direction while it's charging up. During the animation, I'm not locked in, I have freedom to choose wherever I want to go. Same with the whirlwind, I guess, but... Actually, it, I guess it's a little bit more common for whirlwind abilities. But in general, the combat feels fine. If they keep going this direction, they will probably end up with something close to Guild Wars 2. Now, you could argue the combat is not a positive at all, because I don't know if you can see it behind me. Barely. I bought Guild Wars 2 when it released back in the day, and I still have the box. And everything fell down. And if we look into this a little bit further, when did Guild Wars 2 release? 2012. From the get-go, even if they reach Guild Wars 2 combat, they are 
12 years behind. And that's assuming it's gonna release this year, which it won't. So hopefully my yeah, my horse is fine again. So I'll just I'll just walk around a little bit and talk talk to you about all of the negatives, which all kind of tie into the same problem. Uh, everything in the, every negative that I'm gonna tell you kind of isn't even really a problem of the design philosophy of the game, but more so a problem of this game will never fucking release if it took them eight years to make this. Why am I saying that? We can actually start with the combat. What you see in the background right now is their so-called Ashes of Creation Apocalypse, which was a battle royale test of Ashes of Creation over five years ago. And this test was full action combat. This was a test for their action combat. And when I played this, this was around the same time uh, BDO's Battle Royale was released. I like this more. I was like, damn, this is kind of fun. The combat is kind of fun. There's a lot of movement involved. You could even dash like into the air and stuff. There was a lot of things going on. I was like, yeah, this is going in the right direction. And then you compare that with the combat we have now, five years later, and I'm like, what the fuck happened? I understand they want to go into the tab target direction, but why would you remove all of this? And, and as you can see, you even have to aim with your bow, right? Crazy thing. Doesn't happen in tab target games. Tab target games in general are just a symptom of an era of video games where action combat wasn't possible yet, okay? There's no reason to make a tap target game in 2024 or l probably 10 years from now. There's no reason to do that. It's just limiting the combat system in a lot of ways. And the only people that could say, I prefer tap target are the people that are healers. Because for single target healing, tap targeting makes more sense. For everything else, tap targeting is just objectively inferior. But let's assume that is their goal, that they want to make a good tap target MMO, and that's perfectly fine because it's their own game, so let's go with that. If they keep going with this combat direction, maybe they will end up at Guild Wars 2, which released 12 years ago. So you could see that as a positive, you could see that as a negative. I, I think that's perfectly fair either way. But the real problem is, and maybe you've noticed already by me walking around, this map, this world, this one biome that they have, which is only this place, there's nothing else really in there yet, they have a little bit of this, a little bit of here, but it's barely functional. And there's just a couple of mobs scattered around, basically. This game is empty. It's so empty, in fact, that even level 1 quests aren't properly made yet and are buggy to the point where you can't complete them. Ah, here he is. I have your supplies. What? Thanks, here's your reward. They are ba so empty that most of the roads in the game are basically just made in an Unreal Engine brush tool. Someone just used the Unreal Engine tool and placed a road. No? Like... Uh, you telling me this is the, the finished biome? And they're so empty that uh, most towns uh, are actually the exact same layout. So if you go over here, to this layout right here, uh, just, just memorize what this looks like for a second. It's the exact same layout. And there's a third one too. So right now they have two different types of nodes. I'm not aware if they said that's what that's intentional or like that's that's that what they marketed, I guess. But even the five nodes that they have in the game um, are basically copy pasted. There's two different ones. So Winstead has the exact same layout as Jova and uh, New Ayla and Mirrolith. And Halivon, Halion, Halivon, whatever, have the same layout as well. So the five nodes that they have right now that are only level to level three, out of 85 nodes that you can level to level six, even those are already copy pasted. Same goes for basically everything in the game, the assets. I, I mean, this is going to be very funny. Um, hunting. This is, there's a deer here. You're like, why is there a random deer here with this thing? Because it's the hunting mob. This is how you hunt in this game. Never mind, I can't show you. 
Oh wait, there's a wolf. Never mind, I can show you. This is how you hunt in this game. This took eight years to develop. And this is what the hunting looks like. Okay. More examples. I mean, same goes for the assets. I think a lot of people pointed this out already that most of the ass assets just seem randomly placed. Um, like you would have in like an Unreal demo or something. Next thing also is the map. I think the map is completely dog shit on literally every single level. You can barely see what's going on. I love that at least the events are a little more visible this, this time around this weekend. But overall, I can barely see what's going on on my map. And even if you zoom into the map, it gets pixelated weirdly. Why is the map fully revealed already without me ever exploring anything? Like, I, there's games... WoW in 2004 had a better map than this. Now, this is a small thing, but I just want to keep giving you examples why I think they, ba they barely developed anything. Or if they have, they haven't shown us anything. Um, another thing is mobs actually drop items depending on your level rather than theirs. Uh, I noticed that because I've, I was grinding the same grind spot for basically since level 5. Although I tried a lot of different ones. And the higher level I got, the more glint I got. Which, to be fair, also leads me to the next point. <laughs> Looting or itemization in general in this game is also still very lackluster and there's barely anything. The, my most exciting l loot drop was a purple shit. Oh, we got a purple shit? Guys, this is my, pur my first purple shit. Let's talk about the five node locations that we touched on already a little bit. What you need to understand first is there's 85 nodes planned for the game and Every, every node needs to have six different levels, okay? Why is this so important? And uh, why is it, why will this take 1500 years to complete? Steven himself, and this is kind of the whole point why Ashes of Creation is different from other MMOs, explained that every node and every node level, and therefore everything that's within it, is kind of unique. Meaning every server will have level different nodes, and therefore every server will have different content essentially, maybe different items, different bosses, and so on. The world itself is reacting to the advancement of specific nodes. This town was advanced near forests and mountains, drawing the attention of the sinister creatures that dwell within. If the town had been formed along the coast, perhaps this fisherman would have caught something more dangerous than the fish you see here. The content that exists in Ashes connects in some way to the location and advancement of the node system. It reaches level 5, becoming a city, and some new events are happening in the world. A bridge has been built to connect this area to a neighboring node. This will add a potential trade route that our caravan system will take advantage of, connecting two neighboring nodes and allowing for economic prosperity for players to capitalize on. However, all of this activity has triggered something deep within the mountain. All of this civilization has awoken an ancient dragon. The higher stage a node advances, the more significant events it draws toward it. Epic world bosses will reflect the development of specific nodes and their location. Our world is designed to react to the players by providing new and exciting chapters to an ever-evolving story. A story that reflects the actions of each server. A story that can change and adapt to provide the players an immersive tale woven by the actions of the community. This dragon is the server's dragon, part of the server's tale, and one which might not be seen on any other server. Judging by this, they currently have five nodes with three levels, okay? Which in this case, let's let's say that's five, five times three, which is 15, okay? They have 15 node levels. Now, how many node levels do they need in general? You need 85 times six. So, out of 510, they have 15 out of 510 node levels at the moment. And, as we just talked about, uh, the nodes are also kind of copy-pasted still. The node towns are pretty copy-pasted, most NPCs are pretty useless, and so on. So, how this is... The, the, they have nothing in this regard, and this is probably the biggest positive about the game because I love novelty and I love the 
the fight against guides and information on the internet. And this would be a system that could circumvent that because every server is going to be different. And therefore, you can't just watch a guide on YouTube about your server because, you know, every server is going to be different. I'm pretty sad about this. F 15 out of 510 node levels they have right now. Okay, pretty important. Kind of tying into that, right now they say they have 1 out of 18 biomes. These are basically the places on the on on, on the planet that uh, are on the on, on the world that have different terrain. So this one right now is the riverlands. These are the tropics. This right here is going to be the desert, and they're going to have eighteen different biomes. Now I would argue they don't even have the first biome because the nodes in the first biome aren't even finished. Therefore, the biome isn't finished because the the no the, the biome will change depending on what level the nodes are. I wouldn't I think it's generous to say they have one out of 18 biomes very generous okay we can also co talk about the classes and the skill augmentations which is also like uh, not really anything developed yet because it only really starts after level 25 with skill augmentations and they won't have any of that in the game until phase three uh, they don't even have all of the base classes ready, and this is only to level 25 again. They don't have any of the religion stuff ready, which could also be augmentations. I think even races can have augmentations. We can also talk about races, uh, that basically uh, there's only one race in the game, because all of the races have basically the same animations. So this right now is the female Vec Orc animations of me hitting and jumping and walking and stuff. And this right here are the animations of, I think, the Kalar humans. And as you can see, it's the exact same. There's no difference. I, can t I can't tell the difference anyways. If there's a difference, I can't tell that there is a difference. So just from that, I wouldn't even say that they have three races. I think this is already misleading. They have one. And my, my orc, by the way, was a um, female. So even female and male have the same animations at the moment, it seems. So th that's not even correct either. So all in all, I don't think um, this game is going anywhere. I genuinely don't believe that they are anywhere near completion. And there's so many, like there's two people in the Ashes of Creation community. One is like, this game is so much better than even the current MMOs and it's only an alpha. And the other one is like, you can't criticize the game because it's an alpha. So. Either way, um, I don't think it's. I don't think after eight years of development, this is this is something you can defend. Even if they've been developing this for two years, I think this is questionable. And eight years is just an insult, especially considering they're charging hundred twenty dollars for this. And five years ago, they had a much better, in my opinion, baseline of a game. Decided to swap over to Unreal Five. And now the game is just a scuffed version of a 2010 MMORPG or something. Like if this, if I saw this 10 years ago, I would probably be like, yeah, could be kind of interesting. But as the more I play, the more I think this is not going fucking anywhere. And it's sad because I truly think that their concept and the, 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 the theoretical design of the game is actually quite interesting. I love the node system, I love the direction with free form, you get dropped in the world, you need to figure out what to do, and it's dangerous and risky, risk versus reward they talk about a lot. And even the combat, if it goes into the direction of Guild Wars 2, I can see it being decent. But there's just nothing. The game is ba basically empty, and I honestly, just me talking about it as a game is too much. Like, it, as Steven always says, this is a true alpha. This is not a game yet. There's barely anything in it. And I just can't see this going anywhere, unfortunately. If they're going at this pace, I think they're lu you're lucky if this releases in 10 years with all of the features in it. Just judging by, by what they have made so far, I'm honestly, the more I play, the more worried I am. Because I actually quite enjoyed Apocalypse back in the day and now I can't say that anymore. I can't say that I like any of what I've done here in comparison to any other games. And that's all also considering maybe in the future there will be better MMOs that we have right now. And will Ashes be able to compete with the Riot MMO? 
Will Ashes be able to compete with any upcoming MRPGs? Although there's not many. Um, I don't know. And I, I, I genuinely, I think they will run out of money before they go anywhere with this. Because if they keep developing the game at this pace, um, this will genuinely never release. And I hope that it will. And I hope that they fix it. And I hope they can figure it out somehow. But I'm, I'm not trying to be mean here. Intrepid, if you keep developing your game at this pace, you will never release it. And obviously development is not a linear process. So maybe they have like all of the puzzle pieces in place and now they're gonna accelerate. But I don't see it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wait for phase 2, which is supposedly in December. And I'm gonna wait for phase 3, which is supposedly in May of next year. And if those two don't deliver like significant progress, I think it's fair to say that it won't release. I hope this was useful um, for the people that were considering buying it. And uh, yeah, I, ho I hope I hope it goes anywhere. I, ho I hope it I hope it continues. But I hope they figure out how to how to make a game first before selling something again. So yeah, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Ashes of Creation is ramping up production, and we wanted to be able to show people, hey, look, this is what we're able to accomplish within just less than three months from our Kickstarter, bringing you our pre-alpha build, keeping that window open for development so that everyone can see exactly what we're doing on this project.